What is up all you GBA type people? This is Tom, and uh, bringing you guys a video, which is uh, kind of a long time coming. Haven't been around for a while. Anyway, with me as always is my good partner and Power Rankings guy, Kelly. Howdy peoples, howdy peoples, under the radar here. Now, we'll be bringing you guys your bold predictions. Now, we did do one of these for the GBA last year, or last season, sorry. And uh, basically, Ryquin and I, and I believe a few other people, all we did is just state some a few bold predictions that we had about this season. You know, some very like outlandish, but potentially possible things that could, in fact, happen. So right now, Kelly and I will go over. Uh, we had six analysts out of uh, you know how many analysts we have in our large party of people. Just give us two each. So we'll discuss them real quick, talk about them, and then you guys will get a post-season. Uh, bold prediction video where we'll probably have a bigger group talk about their predictions and how likely or plausible or how, you know, if they panned out or whatnot. So, without further ado, first off, we have Gubbs, Gubbs, right, uh, his first prediction <laughs> was the Miami Dolphinians will not win a single game this season. Quite harsh, off the bat, Damn. from Gubbs. <laughs> Damn, that hurts. That it hurts does. Me. Now, oh. what do you think? Um, that's, no, that's, no, that's, no, I think they'll, I think that they'll at least go even, if not do better, because I, I have a lot of faith in them, I like their team a lot, no, I don't think that'll happen whatsoever, but I, it's crazy. I completely agree, outside of the, uh, Butterfree, which is kind of the, uh, the Butterfree's biggest... gonna get a sweep, Butterfree, Butterfree's gonna get a sweep, I have faith. Uh, okay, we'll talk about that one later, um, <laughs> I like, I like Dolphinian's team a lot, I, I like Mega Metacham and Weavile, Sylveon's on there, Needle King's really good. Uh, maybe not Raichu or Butterfree, but that's beyond the point. Um, I definitely think they'll win more than definitely. Uh, definitely, I think at least five games, uh, at the most six, maybe doesn't matter. Uh, second prediction is that Dragonite will only account for four KOs this season. Now, I feel this is very plausible because of the fact that I don't think Dragonite is as good as other Dragon types in this format. Um, maybe because of its speed, maybe because to really pull off a sweep, it has to get a D-Dance up. But outside of that, it is a very sturdy type uh, type mom with its, uh, was it Wonder Sh Marvel Scale, Wonder Scale, whatever it is, Wonder Guard? Um, uh, multi-scale. Damn it, multi-scale. Close enough. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> uh, but it, it is good enough to set up. It's just I, I don't see it getting many kills with the amount of physical attackers that are on the Dolphinians team. What do you think? I think that I actually don't think that it'll get four. I think it might actually get less than that. And I don't even think that they'll be because he got up a D-Dance. I think they'll just be E-Speed, Choice Bandit, Revenge kills. So I, I could definitely see that one happening. It's a very good point. I didn't even think about that. But Choice Bandit, Dragonite is also very deadly. So mm -hmm. next up, Burke. I'll let you talk about him. Okay, so Burke's first prediction is Excadrill will never successfully perform a sweep against another team utilizing the ability Sand Rush. Wow. That's 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 kind of a little too bold. What do you think? Well, first I need to find... So Excadrill, <clears throat> we haven't quite seen Excadrill do that on other teams before, but the uh, Bufflon Bills do have a Powdon, and they do have some uh, other things that could set up Sandstorm. Um, not going to try and figure out which ones on his team can figure that out now. Um, but Excadrill, I think, is more of a utility mon. We've seen uh, Hank use it in uh, the Salt Fest form, your special defensive form, you know, you just your revenge kill or scarf, whatever. Uh, maybe not, we, maybe that is plausible where, you know, we'll see it be more utility and um, just revenge killing rather than a sweeper. Mostly I think that this team is kind of stacked in terms of um, offense, so maybe it won't be as necessary as one might think. See, I think the exact opposite. I think that 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 team is is probably the fattest team I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Like I'm waiting for that team to go on biggest loser. Like it's it's crazy fat. So I definitely think that it's possible for it to never get a sweep using Sand Rush just because he has so much bulk he can wear it down easily without it. So I could definitely see that happening. I was gonna say, did you see Cooper's team? We 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 talked about Cooper's team. <laughs> that I team think... was gonna go on biggest losers. <laughs> Okay, so Burke's second prediction is the Houston Gastros will use Zen Mode Darmanitan at least once this season. Uh, I mean, if the matchup calls for it, I could see it. Because, I mean, if he's like Belly Drum Zen Mode, hey, why not? That's you know? true. Uh, it is kind of bizarre, though, because doesn't Darmanitan have to take a hit to switch into Zen Mode? Yeah, he has to be below half, if I'm not mistaken. Right. And but Darmanitan isn't quite the. I mean, besides his HP stat, it isn't quite the best thing of, uh, when it comes to taking hits. 
it's 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 possible, but to me, that's very doubtful that's going to happen. Mostly because I see Darmanitan on this team being a uh, revenge killer, or at least something that can give him some sort of initiative. Uh, if anything, I could see Sock or Mega Aerodactyl being his prime time killers. Um, Zenmo Darmanitan maybe is a kind of like a week ten type thing. Uh, yeah, for not, fun. Maybe not early on. So definitely. But moving on, we have Ryquin's, uh predictions. First off, he is also on the same track with the Exodrill. He thinks that it will never sweep more than three Mons to win a match. So what I guess he's trying to say is uh, Exodrill won't be able to, well, won't have a mini sweep to win a match. Maybe they'll kill Mons, just pick off a few here and there. One by one. Exactly, but never get a full-blown you know, half sweep. That No, it's redundant, but uh, I could see yeah. that happening. I, think, I like, could definitely like, see that happening. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exodrill, like I said, it's more of a utility mon. I could see it being more of a... Um, kind of a, what you needed to do that match versus just a all-out offensive sweeper. That and the more and more that people use it in draft-based formats, it becomes more of a easy thing to plan for because people start to realize what it can do and the way their teams can adapt to it. So I definitely think it's possible. That's very true. I believe that it probably is much more um, kind of hyped analyzed. Up. Yeah, it's hyped up, but now it's it's kind of, you can kind of pick up what it's going to do. Same way you can, you can think of what other mods are going to do, such as Suicune or uh, I guess even I mean Mega Venus or stuff like that. It's you can pick apart those sets rather easily. Yeah. Moving on, we have his second prediction, which is Mega Aerodactyl will be league leader in KOs by the end of this season. What do you think? Heck to the yeah, I love Mega Aerodactyl in this format. I think it's fantastic. I I hope to God that's I hope to God that happens. I definitely think it could happen. I too love Mega Aerodactyl. I think we haven't quite seen it as often as I'd like to. Uh, in a draft style format, or at least in the GBA. I'm unsure about other leagues, but I do believe that, yes, it can be very good in this format, and I do believe that we will see uh, it pull off maybe more kills than you'd think. Maybe not as much to be MVP, but I definitely see it up there in at least the top three because it is quite potent, and it's diverse, and it's effective, and it's fast and offensive, and I love Mega Aerodactyl just maybe as much as you do. Yeah, and I know for a fact I've faced it in the league format before, and it's really hard to plan for. So whenever it's really hard to plan for, it makes it, like Weavile, for example, really hard right. to plan for. It was number one. So there you go. It's just, that I think it will definitely be up there, if not top. Maybe fast and physical is just really good in the GBA format. Basically. So, moving on, we have Old Man Tup's predictions, and his first prediction is that Shaman will be offensive MVP. Keep dreaming, Tup. That's really digging, really digging. Like, that's, okay, he, he's reaching so far, he's about to fall over. I mean, but you never know, it could happen. I mean, if this was, like, Gen 4, I mean, yeah, I could see that because it was more bulk, less, like, power ceiling, uh, heavy hits. Um, and I think there's just way too many things in this league that can hit Shaman super effectively. Um, almost every team I could just pick up one or two things that are a faster and b have super effective hits to hit a uh a shaman and if it's choice locked into something um i'm sure something can come in and variate a move and probably knock it out or at least switch it out so it's scared off anyway yeah i'm not, not this one not only that but its move pool is somewhat limited between grass coverage earth power and psychic type moves am i am i wrong in thinking that yeah, am i missing it something? also gets air slash and of course your hidden power values but sometimes yeah. hidden power is just not enough to knock out something when you need it to exactly so i i think tups i think tups dreaming a little bit but you never know tups second prediction there will be more usage of manual weather than automatic weather this season um, I don't know, because I don't, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm thinking correctly, there wasn't a whole, whole lot of, like, chlorophyll or swift swim users or even sand rush users that were drafted outside of, like, Excadrill and some stuff like that, uh, or Manaphy, so, I mean, actually, thinking about it, because if, uh, with Gassy's team, if he wants to run rain, he could run it every single battle, and then technically it would automatically, rain would be more than drizzle, you know? Yeah. So I could I could see that I could definitely see that I could certainly see some of his uh, his fatter mons like uh, I know Blissey learns um, learns Raiden Dance I know that uh, Hound Doom learns like Sunny Day so maybe he can use that to counteract the Bills 
Uh, but some of the other teams, I think it's going to be more of a um, utility type thing, maybe a uh, kind of surprise thing to buffer, maybe another mon they have on their team. But I don't see, see it being a prime time uh, strategy such as you know what we were, what we're so used to seeing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so moving on from there, we have. Oh, actually, no, no, you you go first. Oh, uh, you want me to go first? I Okie dokie. Okay. So uh, these are my predictions, and my first prediction was that Landorus Incarnate will average less than one kill per game, and show that <laughs> it is manageable in this format. Uh, I mean. People are starting to learn how to take on huge threats, like for example, things like uh, Mew and Charizard X. Like it's just, it's been proven that they're starting to not be as potent in this format. So I could kind of see it. I could kind of see it. I can certainly agree with that. Um, even things like Kieran Black and even uh, like Raikou or Mega Manetric, things that you think would do really well just based on their 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 you know variance in moves or their speed, um, or even their bulk. I could see certainly see that it wouldn't be as uh, effective as some people might think in more of a Smogon type uh, environment as compared to the GBA. So this is definitely a very plausible one and we'll see how this one pans out because it can, like, it can go one of one of two ways um, but I definitely think it's going to be less effective than some might think. Exactly. My second prediction was that the Houston Gastros will never successfully get Cro Crocoon to work this season and uh, that's just because a lot of teams I've noticed have learned to deal with that the same way they dealt with Landers Incarnate and Cure and Black and things like that my two of my predictions kind of blend together I guess um yeah I, I don't even think we've seen Crocoon be used that way at all really in the GBA Steve had it last year uh, and Steve, used... Steve's would have worked if he didn't get critted that's true. I completely <laughs> forgot about that. It would yep. have worked. You're right. But before that, we had uh, we had Cooper use it, and he used it just in more of a uh, utility, like a toxic protect variant, or just three attacks and maybe calm mind or rest stuff like that. I don't think it's going to be effective as effective, but I do see it being a very very effective wall on that team, which is already super offensive. Yeah, definitely. Now, because my hubris is so uh, so large along with my ego um i see so we're gonna go with mine last because me but <laughs> we have first off mega metacham will be offensive mvp i love mega metacham and this might be reaching nope. real far and yes, yep uh, yeah it might be reaching real far but i want to see it at least i want it to be up there i want to see it be top three i'm hoping but Dreams. I definitely Dreams. think it'll be up there because it, it's fantastic, and there's nothing that wants to switch into a high jump kick or even a drain punch from it. Yeah. However, because the because it's only base 100 speed, I think that'll kind of hinder it a little bit since you can't choice scarf it because it's a mega, obviously, and things like that. I think I think it'll be up there in the tops, but there is no possible way it'll be within the top three or even in the top five. Damn. A man can dream, and uh, if if I uh, if that does happen somehow. A lot of you guys I will eating, publicly apologize. I will publicly apologize. Eating a big piece of humble pie, but you know I'll probably be the one doing that. Doesn't matter. <laughs> so, so second, we have uh, this one I really like. I wasn't in the draft breakdown video, that hour and forty minute, however long it was, video. Um, Dude, yeah, I know. <laughs> but I say that the New York Shelmets will have one of the most successful teams, maybe not just this season, but overall, both offensively and defensively. I see it going eight and two, solely because. I think the variants that the Shelmets have are really effective. You see a mix of offense, and you see a great mix of defense. You see, I think I can see variants that covers certain weaknesses this team might have. I can see ways of it handling things like knockoff, or special sweepers, or even just your run-of-the-mill like scarfers. I can see a lot of different ways that um, the Shelmets can really change up the game on their opponent, so that they don't necessarily know like manual sets but have to play around uh, really good, unique ideas, unique sets, unique uh, EV spreads for this team overall. And I'm really excited to see how this team pans out. Me too. I, I definitely think that the New York Showmits will be... I thought from just the draft, I thought that they would be number one. That's my opinion. I think that they have a fantastic team. I love the team that they drafted. I love Mega Ampharos in this format. I think it's extremely underrated. And uh, I love manual weather, especially manual rain with Manaphy. So I definitely think that it'll be, in, I mean, 
I think it'll be number one. That's what I'm saying right now. But hey, so we're both we both really like that team. Yep. Which is good. I mean, I, like you said, we want to see these teams that we kind of pick out to do. Anyway, last slide. Last thing we're going to talk about is who we think and. You know, in the comments, we want you to say as well, who do you think the, the best three bonds will be in terms of KOs this season? Now, Kelly, I see that you, you love Mega Aerodactyl. I love Mega Metacham. But who else do you think? Um, I honestly think that Reuniqueless will do really, really well because it's becoming one of those mons in Leaf format that people are starting to realize how good it is and how good of a, th uh, like how good of a sweeper or even a bulky uh, chip damage Pokemon it can be. So I think that'll be up there. Uh, I always think that Raikou and uh, Nidoking will be probably will always be up there in kills just because I think they're fantastic. Um, I can definitely see that. Uh, I think uh, Victini, Hydreigon, and then even Infernape. Those are kind of standard picks. I get that. However, I just think the variants they have, the speed, and the like unique sets that you can run are gonna really push it up top. Uh, even Manaphy. But those are all like standard picks. I think really kind of reaching picks. There's things like Tornadus. And then uh, I'm going to go really, really bold here and say something like Porygon 2. See, I think Victini is one of those mods, like the ones I mentioned in my predictions, that people are just learning how to deal with. And it can be not as scary if you prep really, really well. But, yeah. hey, Definitely. man, you never know. That's true. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. We wanted to keep this rather short solely because, like I said, well, we, we will be talking about these predictions much more in depth when the season does come to its conclusion. Uh, we'll talk about if we were right, if we were wrong, you know, what made us right or wrong, and really what we were thinking. Were we high? Were we drunk? You know, stuff like that. Yes. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm going to be uh, really eating my words on that one. So, like I said, <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed. Please comment the, down in the description down in the description, down in the comment section about who you think are going to be the top three, who are you most excited to watch. You know, battles are starting up real soon, so uh, we look forward to talking to you guys week to week. So with that, I will talk to you guys soon. Later. Bye.